These hyper little fish are known as zebra fish. They're a tropical fish from Southern Asia. We're here at the University of Alabama today, and we're gonna find out how these little fish can help in research in finding cures for cancer and other diseases. With us is Yuji. He's a doctorate of biology student, and he's studying gene editing techniques like CRISPR, Cas9, and other techniques that can help us in this research. Let's follow him into the lab. You might want to dust off your biology book because we're taking nature into this lab. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm Yunji. Okay. So this is what I'm doing for my PhD dissertation. Okay. All right, so this is the overview of my project, one of my projects. Uh, so we're inter interested in cadmium, you know, the heavy metal, right? And it's been known that there's association between cadmium and um, non-alcohol fatty liver disease, okay? This is a big issue nowadays because a lot of people, especially from the United States, um, I think like about 70% of the uh, people uh, who have diabetes or they're their obese, they have the non-fatty alcohol fatty liver disease. And partially, the cadmium is one of the cause, okay? So now we're trying to understand the mechanism how the cadmium can cause this liver disease. That's the one mechanism. Um, I mean, we're also trying to understand about the uh, how we can protect, you know, with the influence in the response, uh, response of the uh, cadmium exposure. Uh, one of the pathways we're interest, interested in is the hemoxygenase pathway. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about more details about this, but this is one of the genes that um, helps to make bilirubin. Okay. Okay. Uh, bilirubin has been, oh, I mean, was believed to uh, be a just like a waste product from okay, our hemes that we have in our blood and such. But recently we have found out that there's an additional role in bilirubin that does antioxidant, uh, has, it has the antioxidant property, can uh, reduce the cellular. ROS. These are the radicals are very dangerous, which can make uh, non-alcohol non fatty liver disease. Okay, cadmium yeah. can cause ROS, which can cause this. Right. So, for our you know research, we try to understand the role of this better to reduce the uh, uh, the I guess this is one of the way we can treat the people who have the this liver disease. Okay. All right. Okay. So what we're interested in here is that is the hemoxygenase, and also there's another gene. It's called bilirubin reductase. Okay. All right. And there's a reductase A and B. All right. So what this what this do? I mean, what these uh, enzymes or genes do? In the process of this conversion, uh, this these enzymes participate in uh, this process to make biliverdin to bilirubin. So hemoxygenase helps to make bilirubin, okay? But we want to have the bilirubin, right? So this enzyme participate in that process to make bilirubin, okay? It's not like a simple one one to one uh, like relationship, but there's other things can involve them. Yeah, it's part of the pathway. Exactly. Yeah, to uh, Billy Rubin, right? So gotcha. we know that this, this, that gene is. In, these are important, but we don't know their individual role in terms of the uh, its function, antioxidant property to the scave scavenging uh, RS level and cell at the cellular level. So what we're going to do is to we have zebra fish. <laughs> yeah. 
the red fish, right? I mean, we can't use the human, right? Because you know, it's not. What, now, why why do we use uh, zebra fish? Okay, uh, there are multiple reasons. They reproduce really fast. Okay. And they're they have a spines. They're vertebrate uh, animals. So they're really close to yeah, yeah. Uh, to humans. And there's a lot already known about the zebra fish. They are really well evolved. And this a lot already known about the zebra fish. They are really relevant to human disease as well. And also, the zebra fish has the liver. Okay, yeah, right? yeah. Okay, so yeah. Uh, that's why we're using this one. So they're very similar to humans exactly. in a, a lot of their physiology. Yeah, you're uh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What we're doing is here, we're introducing gene. Like for this one is the hemoxygenase and put it in here. Okay, all right. Uh, with some techniques, we are overexpressing the hemoxygenase. Okay? okay, so this, this fish, when it becomes adult, will have human hemoxygenase overexpressed compared to the control. Okay, yeah. overexpressed he hemoxygenase. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So you can think about if this fish has more hemoxygenase and this one. It's yeah. going to have more of the this cycle going on, so we can have less of the ROS. So they'll be more resistant to your cadmium. The the hemoxygenase is that is that the uh, is, is that the um, the enzyme that you find in the blood is it in the bloodstream, um, the blood cells. No, it's uh, not. It is not. It is not. It's, it's, it's not the, the okay. In the cell. All right. In yeah. the in the cell, is it mainly in the liver? Is that where we're? Uh, yeah. It's because the liver is the uh, one of the organ that uh, that responsible for many like detoxification. Yeah. Okay. And so that's why it's right. high the level in the liver. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, uh, so this fish will have more of hemoxygenase. Hypothesizing that uh, this fish will be resistant to cadmium and will not have the liver liver disease that we described, okay? Okay. And also we are going to um, have other fishes, so we have three three groups. Another fish will have bilirubin with a case A overexpressed, and another fish will have the B, the type B overexpressed. So we will see how much they are more uh, susceptible or more resistant to the cadmium and the liver digest, and we can figure out its physiological role of the each gene. Yeah. Before we talk about CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing, let's talk a little bit about the metal cadmium. Cadmium is used in industry in paint and electronics. NICAD batteries are made from it. People at a risk for exposure are smokers, people in the ag business, agriculture, industry, welding. Um, it affects the uh, kidneys, the, the lungs, the brain, and the bones. And uh, tragically, many of the 9-11 first responders were exposed to uh, heavy amounts of cadmium, lead, and other toxins like asbestos. Uh, unfortunately, many of these people are still affected years later, and some have even died from, from these after effects. I'm going to briefly uh, introduce uh, about the CRISPR technique that has been very useful for a lot of genetic experiments in biology and it's one of the promising uh, techniques in science, uh, especially for uh, the medical science as well, those who have genetic disorders and this is specific enough to uh, not having much of the side effects to uh, and also uh, treat the genetic disorders and so I'm going to you mean side effects not the non-target you're type, right it's very specific so it's, it doesn't have a lot of yeah, non you know but again who knows and there's something going on so that's why we are still careful about using the CRISPR technique to human and for now it's been used a lot in like model organisms like a okay. zebra fish or like a, or a drosophila or the, the yeah so still using an the animal models exactly, for that yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, think about we have the double strand DNA here. Okay, let's say this is human DNA. Okay, all right. Again, the part of the Cas9 system. This is complex. Uh, is from bacteria or other organisms. Okay, and okay. this is the the host defense de mechanism. But we can use this one to demodify the human genes now, or the genes whatever you are in, very interested. Okay. So basically, what we are doing is that we Okay, so uh, human gene, oh, we have a lot of the like PAM sequence, you know, is that here the red one? It's the PAM yeah. sequence. It's just like a, uh, the sequence that uh, 
are found everywhere in the gene. Yeah. Okay, right? But PAM sequence is important because Cas9, this protein, is bound to bound to the PAM sequence. Oh, okay. And All it right. cuts very adjacent, uh, okay, adjacent nucleotide of that you know PAM, se PAM sequence. So basically, when we are expressing Cas9 protein and also guide RNA, which is the specific to your gene, okay? So we are designing this and introduce to your cell, okay? And this cell will be, will, uh, will find this specific target with the PAM sequence. So with that binding, it will cleave your gene of the, the target of your, of your interest. It will cut okay, it, it will yeah, cut essentially it. cleave okay. it. Cut it. Yeah. Exactly, okay? And so that's the basic mechanism, but you can cut and remove that, okay? Yeah. But advanced the technolo technology in, uh, in addition to this one is that you can introduce another gene at the same time. So by the repairing mechanism, yeah. you can, you can uh, take that, uh, the insert, so you can uh, you can introduce a new gene inside of it for insert a new gene exactly. yeah into the yeah into the place where uh, so basically you're cutting here right okay you're cutting here and now you're trying to you're, you're introducing like a donor DNA that yeah. you want to introduce in so by the repair mechanism it can uh, I guess integrate into uh, the main gene so now after cleaving now after the the cleaving you will have the the new gene. Okay, of the, the, uh, and, and as that pertains to your research, this you would go in and you would cleave the gene mm -hmm. from the liver cells of the zebrafish, yes. insert in new genes, modified genes uh -huh. that are resistant to the cadmium effects. Yes, exactly. And and that yeah okay. So and then then you would look it. Let, you would look in their offspring, the baby yeah. zebras, mm -hmm. you know, zebrafish, and and determine whether they were in fact resistant, find the ones that are resistant yes. to the uh, liver disease, the liver cancer, and those those are the ones that, are, that you would call the uh, uh, successful. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Right. yeah, exactly. You asked me why we're looking at the liver, right? How yeah. do we know liver is important for the process we talk about, right? Yeah. Uh, this is one of the results that we had it um, uh, from the one of the, the experiment. And this is the hemoxygenase one in zebra fish. Okay. And this is the the baby fish. So what we did is we make a probe that oh. against to that gene oh. in the chromosome. A probe. The, okay. Yeah. So that probe has the fluorescent light in there. Okay. okay. So basically, when we are introducing this reagent probes, it will bind to the, the where the gene is. Okay. So right. we see that here. This is the liver of the baby fish. Okay. So we know that this hemoxygenase one, uh, this gene is more, found more in this, uh, the organ liver. So okay, that's more, pr more prevalent in yeah, that exactly. area, in that yeah. gene. Yeah. So one of these, uh, by, uh, okay, by fluorescent. Is this an example of the, what, basically what the fluorescent lighting looks like when e, you... Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, so you get the, the green area there mm -hmm. in the tail of that fish and the body of the fish shows you know, your, tar your targets, right? Yes. Your target genes that you're looking for. Thanks for watching. Next time, we're going to talk about how that CRISPR Cas9 is inserted into the zebrafish's egg and also a little bit more about the fluorescent gene probe. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.